Hallo miteinander. I'm Geshe D6 and this is the demo of Toho Artificial Dream in Arcadia. This is the upcoming game by the developer of the excellent Udongin Cross. Even though that gives it some pedigree, this is a complete departure in genre, as we have a turn-based RPG on our hands. I've placed ourselves at the end boss of the demo, we're going to see how we fare against them, and why I'm really optimistic about this title. Our party consists of Oku, Yugi, Sumireko and Moko. Yet, only Sumireko is the real deal, the rest of our companions are so-called sleepers, mindless clones that were hostile until we captured them. Their existence is the crux of the incident within this game's story. The Oku we have just angered, however, is also authentic, and therefore in a different league than the imitation we brought along. We started the battle by buffing everyone's defenses through the use of a global resource called SP. The majority of skills use individual characters' MP, though. I value the defense of our party so much, not because of some character possibly getting knocked out, but Sumireko specifically. As our protagonist, it is the sole condition for a total wipe if she ever drops to zero hit points. A pretty harsh rule, but one you will commonly find in the Shin Megami Tensei series, the prime inspiration of Artificial Dream in Arcadia. You can tell as much from the names of the spells. The ice elemental attack magic is called Akala, for example. While it's not listed as a real weakness of Oku, it still yields pretty impressive damage numbers. The fire magic Agni, on the other hand, would straight up heal our opponent through absorption. That absorption trait is shared by our own Oku, making her an invaluable tank here. While she is still vulnerable to the occasional physical attack, the dopey, bird-brained boss does not learn from her mistakes and keeps using fire spells. Our Moko is also naturally immune to fire, and I've made Sumireko the same by fusing a captured Orin into her. That destroyed said poor Orin, but copied all the Kasha's elemental affinities onto our protagonist. That's why the boss's ultimate attack, Red Sun over Paradise, didn't do anything to our team. Except Yugi, but the Ogress was bulky enough to handle it. SP is accumulated through dealing and taking damage, and by now we've acquired enough to throw out another buff, this time to boost our attack. That should help in achieving victory soon. If you've been keeping track of our party's skill sets, one member will seem a little strange, Moko. The Undying Girl of 1300 Years is a fire wizard that can somehow use healing and even ice spells. How goofy is that of the developer to allow? Very goofy, until you learn that you have to work for this. To teach all these spells, I fused a captured Satori into this Moko. That gave her all the flexibility she needed to be worthwhile in the fire-dominated zone we're currently in. That is another example for the great customization you can get out of the game's systems. One more blow and Oku is defeated. Subjugated, but ultimately alive and well. As Sumireko just saw to take a selfie next to a nuclear reactor. We don't know why she does this or where the narrative goes, but what I do know is that this is an extremely promising demo. From the in-game database, 160 sleepers seem to be planned. That could make it a massive RPG, rivaling Labyrinth of Toho 2 in size and possibly quality. 
I'm Gish86, this was Toho Artificial Dream in Arcadia, a good contender for Fan Game of the Year 2023, if it actually comes out this year. Bis bald! <laughs>